La La Land, or do you want to live in reality? I'd like to live in reality. Good. Then he check out Jesus, because the evidence is he's real. The, the evidence. The evidence, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can you prove to me God exists? And sure. Up, can you uh, prove to me that the Christian Matt. God is quote unquote the right God? You bet. I will prove. I will prove to you that God exists if you first prove to me that I'm not just a bad dream you're having right now. I can't prove that. Thank you. I will prove to you that God exists if you first prove to me that your taste buds tell you the truth that the milk is sour. Can you prove that? Can't prove that. I will prove to you that God exists if you first prove to me that your eyesight really perceives reality. Can you prove that? Can't prove it. Thank you. Now why and what on earth are you doing asking me to prove God exists? Because you know there's no way, okay. there's no way that I could ever prove that God exists. <laughs> Can Impossible. you give me a good argument for it without using the Bible or quoting Jesus? You bet. Thank you. Great. Yes, I can answer the question. What is the evidence, not the proof, okay. but the evidence that God exists? The evidence that God exists, I'll give you 11 pieces of evidence, okay? First one, order and design point to an intelligent mind. The order and design of the cosmos points to an intelligent mind. How? You and I are standing at the foot of Mount Rushmore. As we're standing there, I turn to you and say, hey, isn't it incredible the way the water just dripped over the rock face? Hey, it's George Washington up there. Wow, it's Teddy Roosevelt. Isn't it amazing the way the water, by accident, just carved out those heads on Mount Rushmore? It doesn't show anything. I mean, yeah, it, shows it just shows that there's like, we happen to be an intelligent byproduct of evolution. <laughs> no, you don't get order and design by chance, sir. Order and design point to a designer. Designer genes demand a designer. This guy's good. He's good. Uh, I don't like him, but he's good. All right. It's very um. simple. <laughs> Second point. <laughs> the universe is eternal. No, it's not. There's a big bang. Okay. So the universe is not eternal. The universe has a beginning. Everything that has a beginning has a cause. The universe has a beginning, therefore the universe has a cause. The best explanation is an uncaused cause. That's God. Mm -hmm third piece of evidence for God's existence, the anthropic principle. Life is balanced on a razor's edge. There are so many ingredients that go into allowing this earth to sustain life that it ain't no accident, sir. It's got to be an intelligent mind. If the earth was a little closer to the sun, we'd all fry. If the earth was a little further from the sun, we'd all freeze. Well, I mean, the galaxy is huge. I mean, chance says that, like, there will be a terrestrial planet at some point that just happens to be in the right location that's perfectly around the sun and like... Point four, the amount of information densely packed in the DNA of a single cell demands an intelligent mind. Every time you are confronted by densely packed information, there's got to be an intelligent mind. I feel like three of the points you've given me are just like astronomical odds and you're just quoting God as proof because like it's just an easy way out. Why'd you use the word proof? No. Proof. Ev um, evidence. Evidence. There we go. Good. He's really good. Fifth point. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't like it. Charles Darwin pointed out that if something is irreducibly complex, the whole idea of evolution by chance and fate falls apart. I think there are more than enough evidence, more than enough examples of things that are irreducibly complex, as Michael Behe points out, the biochemist at Lehigh. Irreducible complexity shows that you cannot go from this stage to this stage to this stage to this stage, because in between, if those state, if that is missing, that never happens. What? Mousetrap, slab of wood. Spring, hammer. You cannot evolve a mouse trap from a slab of wood. Mouse trap, slab of wood, and hammer. You cannot evolve from that a mouse trap because the mouse trap doesn't catch any mice if it's just a slab of wood, or if it's a slab of wood and a hammer. It's irreducibly complex. You have to have the slab of wood, the spring, and the hammer. Well, it's the same with the eye. If something's missing out of the eye, it ain't going to work. And there's so many parts of the eye that are necessary in order for an eye to be an eye, it can't go from one little stage to another. Now, the, the classic example is the living cell. See, a living cell is not, it, 
A living cell is irreducibly complex. It can't go from one stage to another stage to another stage and then suddenly become a living cell. It's irreducibly complex. Sixth piece of evidence for God's existence is moral absolutes. The slaughter of innocent children is never good. It is always wrong. Well, so you're saying that there's a universal moral conduct or standard? I'm saying that there are ab moral absolutes. Okay. The only way there can be is if there's a God, the creator. If there is no God, it's all relative. A, a moral absolute, you said that the children, to, I, I'm sorry, what did you say? Slaughter of innocent children is absolutely evil. Okay, well, what about the, uh, the rape and selling of innocent children? Is that morally com completely like evil as well? Because I can point to uh, numerous accounts, numerous occasions where parents are sold by their own children, you know? They're, they're sold into slavery, mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, I'm from Toledo, which is known as like, apparently last week, uh, I was told by a group that Toledo has a lot of uh, uh, human trafficking in the area. And Very I say sad. that like, that is morally like wrong, and mm -hmm. I agree, but I never went to a church. I think it's wrong to sell people because you're born with not a God-given right for freedom, but a, a given right by the government. Okay, great if, point we born, if we were totally born in, 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 in Arabia. Totally relevant. I am not standing out here talking about churches or religion. This gentleman asked me, what's your evidence for the existence of God? Sixth um, point is, okay. moral absolutes demand a moral lawgiver. Now, if you believe there are no moral absolutes, you're a moral relativist, then I don't have a point to make. Okay, then, point seven. Okay, but I think every atheist friend of mine has moral absolutes. Because every atheist friend of mine looks into, the per per person of the, looks into the face of the person who abuses children and says, you should not have abused that child. And when my atheist friend uses the word should, they're appealing to a standard outside of us and acting as if it's real. And the only way it can be real is if there is some God to create and to fight it. Or society. Seventh piece of evidence for the existence of God is love. Our experience of love tells us that there is more to reality than simple matter and energy. There's this innate human being ability that we people have to genuinely care. Eighth piece of evidence, is that where we're at, eight? Right. Eighth piece of evidence is rational mind. Your rational mind points to a rational God. Why? Because it's preposterous to believe that the rational comes from the non-rational. It's ludicrous to believe that the rational comes from the irrational. And that's why Charles Darwin in 1883 wrote a letter to a man named Mr. Graham, in which he writes, if it's true that our minds are simply highly developed monkeys' minds, why do we trust them to tell us the truth about reality? Would you trust the thoughts of a monkey? He's struggling with epistemological nihilism. You can't know anything, because your mind is an accident. It comes from the irrational. No, your mind is not an accident. Your mind is so complex, it's amazing. It's far more reasonable to believe that your mind comes from a rational being than it is to believe that your mind comes from the irrational. Ninth piece of evidence. You as a human being have an innate drive for meaning in life. You're always attaching meaning to your life, so are we all. The only way there can be meaning is if there is a God who created you for a purpose. No God, life is ultimately meaningless. <laughs> I mean, what if someone says there is no meaning to life or like... Then I have nothing to say. But you know what, you know what, you know what you gotta be doing okay. if life is meaningless? You gotta be committing suicide. Because your life is totally insignificant. I've heard this argument, okay. Yeah, well, Camus made the argument, okay? Camus said, Albert Camus, the great French atheistic existentialist philosopher said, the only question modern man must answer is, why not commit suicide? Now, maybe you're gonna choose not to, fine. But if you're gonna genuinely tell me that you don't believe God exists, but you've never seriously considered suicide, you're not being intellectually consistent and honest. That's Camus' point. I agree with him, totally. So what's the point of a God? Like See, the innate drive for meaning in life is an indicator that God is left within you and within me. You're created for a purpose, and you have this innate drive for meaning and purpose in life. But where does that drive come from? Is there anything to satisfy that drive? 
tenth piece of evidence for the existence of God is the historical resurrection of Jesus Christ. The historical evidence is he really died, he was really buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, his followers dispersed in despair and disillusionment. Three days later, he appeared risen from the dead over a period of 40 days to over 500 people who saw him at different times in different places risen from the dead. So those are 10 pieces of evidence, not proof, evidence that God exists. That's well, why I believe God exists. What was the 11th one? I forget. <laughs> there are a slew of other ones, but... All right, here's the 11th one. For me? <laughs> because? Because I've never seen life come from non-life. And do you know what an atheist is believing? An atheist is someone who believes life comes from non-life. You talk about a blind leap of faith. That has got to be the biggest blind leap of faith I could ever imagine. To believe that life comes from non-life is incredible. Why? Because all of my observation tells me <laughs> plant life comes from plant life. Animal life comes from animal life. Human life comes from human life. You never once get the animate from the inanimate. Never. But an atheist is someone who says, oh yeah, but, but there's one exception to all of this, Cliff. In the beginning, life comes from non-life. That's incredible that you could be so naive to believe that. Because all of your experience is life comes from life. Never one time in your experience do you see life come from non-life, never. But you're asking me to believe that, oh no, but, but at one point, life came from non-life. I can't buy it. That's why I believe there's a God. There is no objective value, essentially. So how do you defend that there is an objective value? Okay. I think all there is is subjective value. Because okay. Because it is all we have is our lives to live. And then, yeah, essentially, yeah, we're done after. It doesn't Good. mean anything. Good thinking. So what, right is your, what is your defense that there is objective value? Good. Okay. Well, I, first of all, I want to thank you for thinking so clearly. I mean, I've been out here arguing with atheists who say, oh, no, 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 we do have meaning and purpose and value in an objective sense. No. If there is no God, you're right. We don't have any objective meaning and value. Okay, so why am I convinced that this man has just as much value if he was in a wheelchair than as if he was All-American in football? Because I am convinced that he was created by God for a purpose. And that purpose is not to make money and be an All-American. That purpose is to love God with his heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love his neighbor as himself. And guess what? He can do that from a wheelchair, a hospital bed, or he can do that as a CEO, or as Tim Tebow. So I understand, it really doesn't matter. I understand those are your beliefs, but how do you, what is your defense that objective value exists?